just to make sure start recording. It takes a little bit to start. Yeah, please start. I think we're up. We're recording this meeting. OK, so the meeting is officially recording. Mm -hmm. OK, so the meeting is recording. All right, so hello, everybody. This is Group 3 h 2 No. My name is Travis Stanley, and I will be Roll 1 uh, for Week 3's Soil Investigation, the organizer. And I'll introduce Matthew Bergen. Mm -hmm. Hello. Like, and what role were you? Uh, I'm Roll 4, and yep. I'm going to be discussing all the CDSU um, and also the construction of a final hypothesis. Nice. And Flynn Gundry, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, hi, my name is uh, Flynn Gundry. For this week, I'm the data recorder and graph constructor. I'm in charge of making the uh, most suitable uh, data representation for the group to make sure the results pop. And that was roll three. And lucky last, we have our roll number two, which will be a dual presentation by the lovely Patty Brooks and Patricia Books and Kylie Hall this week. If you guys would like to take the floor and your lovely students will sit back and listen. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Thank you so much. OK, so to start off with, um, as we know, our activity is regarding um, which soil, so that our research question is, which soil best retains water and why? So regarding that, let's have a discussion about where do we think that this activity or research question or, yeah, activity would fit in the Australian curriculum and what year level? Could that possibly suit? Like, is that biological science, earth, chemical? Mm. Like what strand do we think it might go in? Well, I think I think for me, first off, I definitely immediately thought biological sciences, but I think my initial assumption would have been more towards grade three. You know, not 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 too high. Yeah. Um, anybody else feel the same way? Yeah, I was going to say before. Um, having a deeper look into this, um, I reviewed the experiment and I really thought that it was like mid to high, probably like three, four, same as Travis. But yeah. Um, yeah, after delving deeper into it, there is a lot to unpack because it's actually a really thorough experiment. Mm -hmm. I'm the same yeah. with the 12. I would have said you could have, I maybe would have said grade five at best, but I'm still leaning towards four, three-ish because from just like looking at um, the experiment, just like just the experiment, it doesn't look like a, a lot. But yeah, like there's apparently some insane stuff. Yeah, and it, at, at first glance, I agree with you that it, it does look like we could go, you know, use year four, something like that. But yeah. as we've unpacked it, as, as I agree, I think we're sort of aiming at that upper year level. Mm -hmm. I would, you know, what do you think, you know, we're sort of aiming more at year six? Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'm finding. Finding the um, content descriptor in in the science understanding, finding a content descriptor that that experiment can be used to learn something from to teach that content descriptor. Does that make sense? Like a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's there are so many foundation yeah. um, like content descriptors that build up. So now when the students actually do conduct this experiment, um, it really they have a deep understanding of all the prior knowledge and they've already got that fundamental awareness of, okay, this is the soil, this is how it'll absorb or um, mm. like drain through the water and all that. So, yeah. So what, what do we, what did you find Kylie? So we found, so from researching, um, I think that the content descriptor, the growth and survival of living things are affected by physical conditions of their environment. I think for our activity, that matches perfectly and it's under the biological sciences under the science understanding um that you know so, is... sorry guys can i cut in for a second mm. yeah um sorry so stable internet here but we just had a rolling blackout run through spring hill because of the storm outside oh. um, so i lost connection there which is good that that happened relatively towards the start because i'm not oh, sure what's going to happen going. the recording's still going the recording's still going. Um, so do you guys just want to keep going from there or? 
Yeah, we'll keep going. Yep, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. It, I'm just running, I'm just just running off hot, hotspot now, so I don't have to worry about the house Wi Fi. Oh, I'll timestamp just in case. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, we're just discussing the content descriptor um, yep. and that we were. Do you guys, would you agree that that would, this activity would suit year six and under that, the biological sciences um, and yeah. that content descriptor? The growth and survival of living things are affected. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's just without the And the elaboration actually sort of hits the nail on the head with our activity. It says um, investigating how changing the physical conditions for plants impacts on their growth and survival, such as salt, water, use of fertilizers, and soil types. Which. Oh, perfect. Is, that, that, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, because. And yeah, we are. I mean, the content descriptor literally is about to say biological. If it's biological science, then it can relate to the plants because, well, as plants are biotic organisms, they're they're striving for survival. And yeah, the content descriptor pretty much just said what I was about to say. So, then one. Yeah. Um. So the science inquiry skills were thinking. If you agree, um, the questioning, predicting. So where we would be. Um, so with guidance, we're going to pose and clarify questions. We're going to be making predictions about scientific investigations, and that's exactly what we're doing here with our activity. Yep. So I mm -hmm. think that's quite appropriate for our activity. Mm -hmm. Do you think so? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think for this lesson in specific, like it definitely be targeted towards the year six level because it's going once you unpack specifically what they're doing and the nature of the soil itself and the conditions that it needs for growth. It, when you go into the CDSU behind that, yeah, it is at a much higher level than yeah. grade three, which is what I initially yeah. would have thought. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking as we unpacked it. Um, and as so science is a human endeavour, um, it, it matches perfectly too. It states that science involves testing predictions by gathering data and using evidence to develop explanations of events and phenomena and reflects historical and cultural con contributions. So it's that testing predictions by gathering data which is exactly, again, what we're going to be um, doing mm -hmm. within this activity. It's perfect. I we're fine. Yeah, we've discovered where that fits in the Australian curriculum, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So let's have a look at um, health and safety. Mm. Yeah, that's oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to be doing health and safety. Sorry, we can, we're both doing it. Oh, I've got a bit of a head cold, so I'm a bit... Mm. Um, okay, so health and safety. So what we're looking at here is what risk um, is there. So this is to the student. This might be physical or emotional risk. Yep. What we can do to mitigate that risk. So as a teacher, what could we do, um, like identify the risk before it happens? What are we going to do to stop it happening? And then what exactly are we going to be saying to the student so that it doesn't happen? Um, so does anyone want to kick it off? Um, I think as I think this might make Ali very happy, but I think the rule of thumb is uh, don't eat it, don't drink it, don't use it as a weapon. I think I'm a little bit. <laughs> the, the first thing we say. Yeah. Yeah, I think you've covered it all. <laughs> so if we were looking at um, students not using, um, so I guess not using it as a weapon is the risk to the student is um, risk to hurting themselves or to hurting. Others. Others, yeah. others. So what could the teacher do to mitigate that? Well, for, for the start, there could be just obviously stating clear boundaries, saying that this is meant for lab purposes only. We do not want you fiddling with it, touching it unless instructed, and only using it for the intended purpose. Now, okay. obviously, if yeah. this occurs, then the, what the teacher could do is they could put cert, certain students away from each other into other groups where they know that that student... Is a, has a less chance of ruining it for others. Yeah. yeah. I was going to follow up on that. Um, I'm thinking predetermined groups. So, because then you could also delve deeper into it if you're going to have um, heterogeneous groups, so mixed ability, um, mm, yep. to really easily plan out um, students who maybe don't click or that sort of thrive off each other. You mm. could um, just make it a blanket learning environment by mm -hmm. just splitting them up and putting with more positive role model. Excellent. The last thing you'd want is two students who are like prone to conflict being put yeah. together and then one of them throwing sands in the other one's eyes. But yeah. I'd also say 
from the very get-go, making sure that your instructions are clear and concise, that yeah. all the students are listening and that they know that when they're in the lab or you're performing a science activity, is second, the second the teacher says to stop, look at me, put everything down, the students know that they have to respond to that straight away. That's not a negotiable rule. Mm, I completely That's a good point. Mm. Did you have another one? Um, oh, we were talking about um, if students slipping on any mm. water or things. Yeah. Um, did you want to drink? Which one was that? As far as... So another one we looked at was um, if sand or water or soil um, ends up on the floor. Yeah. That, that, that's that um, you know, students can um, slip over on that. So how could we mitigate that happening? Um, I think it goes straight back to what Travis said of just have like if something falls, teacher, a uh, student will just like alert the teacher. Um, the teacher will do the like it's a call and response or they'll try to stop the class make sure no one slips over, quick clean it up, and then get them back ready for the experiment because you don't want to hold up too much time. I think it's important for them to really delve deep into the science and get into that mind space. So it will be good to be able to quickly sort it up, pick it up, sweep it, put a, a, like yeah. a towel over it, and right. just try to negate the hazard. So then how do we stop if we've got, say, four in a group or five in a group and... All, all your sand and your soil and everything's there and the kids are at the table and they're, I want to do the sand or no, I want to do the water, I want to do this. How do we, and then it gets knocked over, how do we stop that from happening in the first place? Oh, Assign okay. each student specific roles from the get-go. Yeah. yeah. Policy. Each student will have an opportunity to, or so on, to have a turn, whether, whether it may be or... Or even if it comes to the case where the kid goes, I don't want to do this, I want to do that, then the teacher could supervise a quote-unquote change of roles. Mm -hmm. So that both students, both students say, teacher, I'm happy to switch, I'm happy to switch, and then the teacher would say, are you sure? There's no turning back. They have to say, obviously, yes again, because there's been situations where kids have switched, and they switched, and they said, I don't want to do this, I hate this, I want to go back. Mm -hmm. So it's more of an insurance policy because switching can lead to problems. So yeah. if it's agreed upon with the teacher and reassured with the teacher, I think that would also be fine as well. So when, how, what exactly does the teacher say to the student to let them know that they'll have a designated role? I think on what Travis said, um, straight back on if they're like predetermined. So same, similar to say, okay, I'm doing number four, the CDSU. Travis is doing number one, get it like that. But in the predetermined groups, when the students are actually told, okay, you guys are group A. Um, Stacy's doing, uh, she'll be holding onto the soil. That's her job. Yada, yada, yada. Make it highly structured um, just so the students know because at the end of the day, they're not here to fight over who pours the soil. They're here to uh, make observations and inferences about the experiment and understand how to conduct the experiment, how to uh, like observe the data and um, make discussions out of it. So I feel like it should just be clean cut. Bam, your soil, your sand, your water. Perfect. Yeah. There's no room for... Yeah. Yeah. No room for, like, wiggling around. This, yeah. is your, this is your job. Bam. Because, let's be real, in year six, you do a lot of experiments because that's when they have all that fundamental knowledge. The fun starts. Mm. You don't have more options. You're yeah. going to have so many opportunities to do fun stuff. Yeah. yeah so do you think then being year six um like in younger grades obviously it would be very um very structured in showing them how to um like if i've got my funnel and i've got my sand in here you know that you need to hold it over you need to hold it close so that they're not pouring like that do you think in year six it's necessary for the teacher to do that or you think that's a that's a given yeah, well, I think I, model. Oh, sorry, I'll let Flynn go. Well, what I would do is actually run through the, uh, like a, sh uh, a shortened experiment myself from the front of the class. So you've got all 30 or so kids sitting, watching you saying, this is how we pour it. This is how we do this and that. And obviously you'd say, does everyone understand? Thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever mm -hmm. it may be. Yeah. Or whatever. 
for the uh, teacher, but obviously, you know, the, obviously the message. And well, if you see a student mucking up when they gave a thumbs up, well, then they can miss out because yeah. they identified this lesson. They understood what to do. They understood the process and you could clarify the start. If you are unsure what to do, please come to me and I'll re restate it. Okay. Yeah. But they give you the option to so come back actually, and do this. So we would actually demonstrate and say, all right, this is how you would pour the soil. We just don't, yeah. You would pour the don't, water. I would give a demonstration first. Yeah. Another, yeah. another thing just in terms of safety that um, I'd yeah. make sure to do, especially when working with soil, is most schools don't have the budget to go and buy fresh soil or fresh you know, beach sand um, from a commercial retailer. So if you're just using sand that you've gotten from the beach or just using soil that you've gotten from a garden, they could have um, other objects in there from litter. Um, example, broken glass. You you never know what you're going to get if you're getting it from a public space, whether it's going to be the soil. So definitely making sure that the kids are wearing gloves and definitely I'd be making sure that I've sifted through the soil as best as I could before I'd let the kids uh, go yeah. ham. Yeah. So then what would, we, what would the teacher be saying to the children about that? I said that gloves are mandatory. You do not get to touch the soil unless you are wearing your gloves. Okay, cool. Awesome. And just quickly jumping back to before on the modelling and all that stuff, um, it actually fit perfectly. When I was doing all my CDSU knowledge, I actually found a few people who did similar experiments to us. So I just linked those in the chat room. So um, I, I'm fully, I'm a model. You model it, show them so they understand what to do and then allow them to build upon that. Yeah. Um, so even if you're under time crunches and you're like, okay, hey, I've only got between morning tea and lunch to do this. Yeah. If worse comes to worse, you can even just show them a video or find an online resource that will just help them to understand it. Because even though they are year six and they do have that capability, mm. a diagram for especially kinesthetic learners or yeah. if they're more of like uh, auditory, just yeah. looking at this picture of a diagram, some of them might just no idea. So having a few avenues of how you've explained it through modeling, through images, through videos, through everything, so everyone knows, because I don't think there'd be anything worse than a student who doesn't get it and they almost feel embarrassed and then they just sit back, relax, and then just are a passenger along as someone leads the experiment. And in saying that, Matthew, that's interesting because we're just going to talk about emotional safety, as you were just saying there. Mm -hmm. If you've got a child, yeah, a student who is just sitting back and not interacting, how how would you deal with that with this experiment or this activity well lots of social and emotional students who have those needs um depending on the school and socioeconomic status um they could have things throughout the school like um uh quiet spaces or places they can go but also it's uh often sensory so they could have small sensory objects like um a little there's this sphere that's super um useful and it's just got little colors on it and all they do is they just push it the colors and they just match them up and it all they they just have this little click just a little something to keep them on track mm -hmm. um just so they don't drift off and um even uh that would be super important on the predetermined groups to understand okay this student has social and emotional um needs like be kind say okay this is his friend they work together put them together, always make sure they have a buddy and they're not going into a blind situation because um, depending on if the student does have any other like learning needs, um, it could all bubble up and fester and if you get stressed and it's, it's an experiment, it's different, they're not comfortable. And if you have like a meltdown or something, it could just impact the rest of the class's learning. So I think yeah. it'd be very important to understand your student, understand how they learn and just help them. So what would you say specifically to that? Because remember, we're in year six um, and, you know, everyone likes to be the same and, and blend in and not stick out. So what could you say to that student? Um, well, when you mean... Wouldn't that depend on your personal relationship with that student? Because in terms of differentiating, every student's different, every student's an individual, and you're going to have your own individual relationship yeah. with that student. So I think what you specifically would say is never going to be the same. Right. Oh, so I was just thinking maybe would you say, you know, if you need your sensory ball, use it. If you need time out, come and mm. see. Let me yeah. 
Oh, pop your hand yeah. up, motor come over, or mm. have some sort of. Yeah. If the student is feeling uncomfortable, you wouldn't say this one on one. You could say this like, oh, if there's any issues, please come to me, talk to me. And if that student, you want to also be very welcoming. You don't want to seem threatening or, you know, like, because you know how some older, older teachers can, like, when you're, especially when you're younger, when you're the younger person, like yeah. a child, you can be kind of intimidated. You mm -hmm. want to, sort of present this sort of in a very open army and sort of friendly way saying if there's any issues or worries come to me I'm happy to talk and then yeah as Travis have gone it would be different for everyone so like someone could just be oh this person we just had like a bad day like you know or some could have more serious problems it could be just going to time yeah. like, or sit out zone or okay. else. It, yeah. It, yeah. No, that's really yeah. good that's great. Yeah. and I think one tiny, tiny quick thing, sorry, on what Travis was saying, I think it's um like how it's unique to the student. It's also unique to the teammates. So it would be worth bringing them aside and just letting them know. Like, obviously, if this we're doing an experiment, this isn't day one of school, and the students are going to know their classmates. Mm -hmm. But it would be important just to run them through maybe any red flags that stick out, or if they need any help, just a little way to say, hey, yeah. um, let's get a... Let's go for a walk. Let's do something just to yeah. mellow them out. What you can do is, is um, if you know there is a student that obviously this is going to be very dependent and this is more, this could be technically a shot in the dark, but what you could do is you could put a student that you know is quite uncomfortable or quite shy with a student that you know is very outgoing, kind, very inclusive would be a good word to put it. You know, this, you know that this student will, 99% of the time, yes. yes, and be like, hey, come here, try this, you know? You wouldn't want to put them with students that you know that are very, I don't, I don't want to sound mean, but very snappy. Yeah, you know? yeah. 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 That, that sounds good. good. Yeah. Yeah. The student who's struggling in an environment where you think that they'll be around happier people, okay. because happiness will spread. Yeah, absolutely. All right, I think we might move on then. Um, um, from that. Um, so now what we're going to do is have a discussion. So we're looking at year six, we know our content descriptor. So the um, research question that we have is, um, so the activity is water retention in soil. The research question is, and if we listen to the language, um, which soil best retains water and why? Do you think that's appropriate for the year level? Yes. Yeah. 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 I like that. Cool. The only thing um, that Kylie and I looked at was the word retains. Um, we would sh think that most children would know, but maybe that's something that we might discuss at the beginning um, yeah. of so that they understand what retain mm. means. Yeah, and I feel like there are also a bunch of words that um, are difficult, like um, mm. The, if you do talk about variables, you can talk about your independent variables and also stuff like aggregate and you can get a few other scientific terms and a fun class activity for preparation would be a word wall. Yeah. Make a word wall, plaster it so everyone can see it. So if anyone is like, oh, what does retain mean again? Oh, it's right there. Bam. Yeah. They, don't need to, they don't need to feel embarrassed by asking. They can go, oh, retains. That's right. It's yeah. How it retains the yeah. holds the water. Before you start the activity anyway, you'll be having your activate prior knowledge, discussing key terms, going through your yes. walt and your wilt. So if yeah. there were any misconceptions, any alt uh, any alternate conceptions, we don't have misconceptions, but if there were any alternate conceptions, you would most likely address those before you started the activity. All right, so let's have a look at our initial hypothesis. So our initial hypothesis includes um, if then and because and we have to it has to come from our research question question hang on a minute yeah no let's not do in let's not do that first because we need to know our independent variable and our dependent variable first <laughs> so let's list all the things that could change in the experiment what could we change the types of soil sand or dirt yeah, yeah. Or soil so we could put it the in. amounts of soil. Yes. yes. We yes. Get the amount of water. Yeah. yeah. The glass used. The storage. Can we change that? Yep. Do you mean what what the water is being collected? Yeah. Into? yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, we could put it. We could put the soil in a, a long cylindrical yeah. beaker. You could put it in a very wide cup. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I didn't explain it well yet, Travis. Stay with funnel. The width of our funnel. The wider a funnel is, if it's not as deep, then the soil's going to be mm. is thinner. Mm. Whereas yeah. if you like a very skinny funnel, like you were talking before, Travis, it's going to be quite thick. The layer of soil yeah. that we have in there. So that's something that we could change. What else could we change? This might be a bit of a stretch, but like compaction, maybe like if they're just going to pour it or if they're going to yeah. pour it and then pat it down. Yeah. Because yeah. then that would, if the whole experiment is like the um, distance between all the actual finite pieces of dirt and sand allows the water to go through, the more you compact it, the more close it's going to be and the different results you're going to get. Sure. Um, um, we were thinking maybe the amount of cotton wool that you use. Uh, mm -hmm, that's yeah. The one. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe even if we didn't use cotton wool, what if we used filter paper or, or uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Something else that we could change. Yeah. yeah. What about um listing all the things that could be measured? Like what could we measure? Uh water. Water would be mm -hmm. water and soil would be the two main ones. So how much soil is in there, how much water is in there? Could we measure yeah, that? Yeah. So that's just mm -hmm. changing yeah. that's just changing the amount, but what when we're actually doing the experiment, what are we measuring? The amount of water that part that is passes through that's not retained. Yes, yes. Yeah. So that's one that we could do. Mm -hmm. um, so we've given it a time limit of five minutes. Is there anything else that we could change? Uh, not change. Are we measuring? Sorry, measure. Yeah, you could, you could measure the speed that the water passes oh, through. Yes, the that's a really good one, Travis. But did we technically measure um, over a longer time period? Technically, can we? for the effects or something can we technically do that um that's okay that's back to change though changing yeah. the amount of time yeah, yeah. about yeah. what we measured the yeah. only one that i thought of is whether you measured the amount of water that was in the cotton ball mm. maybe yeah. this one this one's a stretch but yeah. maybe you could measure um how wet the soil is after a period of time so to yeah. see like say in or maybe well, the next day you yeah. guys measure it and you're like, oh, and doesn't it be fancy? Just go like tap, tap, oh, the sand's dry, the soil not dry, or however you do it. Wouldn't it be just, just, yeah. Or even just half an hour. Can you, wouldn't that be measuring, measuring the weight of the soil then, if you're measuring the water in it? Kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah you could yeah, actually yeah. measure how much water's left over by weighing it. That's a good yeah. point, Flynn. Yeah. All right, so looking at our cows move softly, so with our research question is which soil best retains water and why, what is going to be our independent variable? So the one thing that we're going to change. Well, the, the soil, right? Because it's... Yep. Perfect. <laughs> Throw it on the sand. Because everyone is looking at me for a second. I like, I like the description of the activity. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was just like, hold what, on. what is the dependent variable? What is the one thing that we're going to measure? How much water is at the bottom of the cup? Nice job. Or how much has passed through the soil? That's Excellent. Right. And what are the things that we're going to keep the same? Ah, What's the, to be the, the amount of soil that goes into each cup, the amount of water that goes into each, yeah. and the time period that passes. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of those ones. Yeah. Maybe, oh, the same instruments are being used. So, you, yeah. as you said, like using the same funnel would make a world of difference if you change them up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What about how much cotton wool? Does that need to be the same for each one, or can we just whack a wad in? Oh, I'll just take yeah. that. Well, let's keep that on the same, I reckon. <laughs> and about this? It might be fairer. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, keep them, keep them the same. Keeping okay. the same. Excellent. All right. So now we're going back to our initial hypothesis. So we start off with an if. So it's if, and we mention our um, independent variable, which is the type of soil. Mm -hmm. Then, and then we mention the um, dependent variable, and then we say why. So we've yeah. said. So we've started it with, if we change the type of soil, yep. then what do you think would happen? 
So this is where we mention the dependent variable. So then, we... then the amount of water that passes into the measuring cups will change. Yeah, because <laughs> why do we think? Why do we think? Because the density or the surface area of the soils change um, yeah. and then less water is or is not retained. Yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, okay. So the, what did you say then? The density? Or the surface, oh, density slash the surface area of the soil. Okay, because uh, I would have... So let's, uh, yeah, let's break that down a bit because that's a bit chunky and wordy. Yeah. Because my thoughts around that, or did anyone have different thoughts before I just jump right in then? <laughs> so my thoughts were, because I'm looking at the sand and the soil, and the sand particles are bigger. So for me, I'm thinking, well, if things are bigger, then there's more space between them. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So more water is going to get through. Yeah, no, I like that. My initial hypothesis would be more in line with yours, Patty. I would be looking at the soil itself and be saying, yeah, okay, well, the, the sand almost look like little rocks. And I would imagine because there's more space between them. I don't think as, as a grade six student, I have un really unpacked the CDSU in, in regards to particle size and plasticity yeah. and, and, and the water, you know, binding to those particles. But I think I would say because there's more space between them, it means it would be easier for the water to pass through the sand than it would for the soil, which is a little more compact. That would be my initial hypothesis. I, I would agree with that as well. Generally, if uh, the particles are bigger and there's more room, then you would assume, just like, just because of how, I don't know, just you just generally assume that you'd be able to... Yeah, prior knowledge. Or water. Just so this is what we've got. So remember, this is a year six student, so just check for my language. Um, if we change the type of soil, then the amount of water retained will be different because the size of the grains are different. So we're not sure about the word grains. Like so how, sort of... how would you describe what they are? Mm. I think I think particles would Part be fine with grade six. Do you think? Yeah. Because um... you think by now they've done some chemistry. Yeah. Uh, I think particles. Well, even then, we're we're not we're not we're not talking about atoms and molecules. No. We're talking like when we say particles, it's just particles in it's the size of you know a particle of dust, a, a you know yeah. the the crumb particles that are on your. It's 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 just that. That's just a key term, one of those vocabulary things that you would have discussed with them before you started the activity and make sure everyone's on like the same. Page. That, it could be just on our word as well. Yeah, it should, it should be fine because particles by itself isn't oh, well, I mean, maybe I'm a little bit biased because I've gone through science and whatnot but it's not something that's heavily in depth there's not a lot to it but like Travis said if we went to stuff like atoms or neutrons protons then that's when I feel like we'd be pushing it but I think the particles that should be okay for year six students perfect okay so yeah. um now let's have a discussion if we were to do the same experiment with a younger group we need to look at how we might change the language to suit, um, say, because we were thinking three or four. Yeah, so if in the discussion. Yeah. So instead of saying um, retains, which soil best retains water and why, how would we reword that? That would be more um, friendly. I would, say, I would say something along the lines of which soil based on its density, because at grade three and grade four, the density of a material is something that they would be covered as they're going through their properties of different materials. So you could go with density instead of particles and retaining and just which which soil based on the density, is it easier for the water to flow through or pass through? Okay, what did you think? Yeah, well, the only word I was sort of going to differentiate there was maybe retains to mm. holds, you know, or something simplistic. Hey, you know? I was thinking that exact thing. Yes. Yeah. Keep they, it simple. Which, which they okay. understand hold, which one holds the most water. Yeah. And yeah. I think the tricky okay, that thing is good. Um, your, your statement was also uh, hit the money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. What about... Um, yeah. The CSM, the cows move softly. Would we change any of that or would it stay the same? Mm. Like, would I think that's the fundamentals of the experiment, so you'd have to keep them the same. Like maybe 
um, you'd avoid lots of those bigger words. But I think, like, just looking back on it, we didn't really have, mm. like, the types of soil, all that stuff's pretty universal. The like, only was... one that I see that we've written is the dependent variable, the amount of water filtered into the container after five uh. minutes. So maybe filtered, maybe we could put um, collected in the container, mm. something, yeah. something like yeah. that. A lot of the language we've yeah. We've used and that the experiment uses isn't really sophisticated. It's all yeah. other than other than the um, other than the thing we just addressed. I think everything else is yeah. okay. Mm. What about our um, initial hypothesis? Would any language change in that? I if we think... change the type of soil, then the amount of water retained. Yeah, probably retain. Like, if you're thinking year threes, retain the old would be different because the size of the maybe they wouldn't put particles, they might put what else would they might call the dirt? It's ex pretty much exactly what we just yeah. discussed, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's probably yeah. called the, the yeah. soil. Yeah, yeah. The dirt, they, would, they would just say, How much water can the soil hold? Maybe. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it's something – that's quite simplistic. I think year three, year two would be able to understand that statement. Yeah. And go, okay, let's have a look. Okay. Okay, so – sorry. No, um, no, that's good. Yeah. Thank you, guys. So when um, – so for on our right-hand side of our ESN, would – do you think that for year six, we would still um, – would you think it's necessary to include the equipment list and the procedure? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Hundred. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter if the year six, year five, year eight, whatever it is. They, yep. if not under, even though we show a visual, if they can look back and read through what to do, it reinforces what they have visually seen, so that they did not miss any small steps. Because if they miss something, that can lead to something else or a debate with the student mm -hmm. saying, "Hey, you missed this step." Could lead to an argument. We don't want none of that. We want a nice, fun experiment where the students can learn the core principles of um, retention of water. And, and I guess, if, like you said, if they miss a step, then it leads to the, the results that you're looking yeah. for them or the observations you're wanting them to yeah. see may not be there. Yeah. yeah. If they aren't doing the experiment properly, they're not going to learn what it is and why it is. They're not going to learn the whole point of the, the session. And we wouldn't want well, all that time and all the resources. And as Travis said, possible funding to go to waste. We want a mm. good, solid, fun, perfect nice experiment. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, so, okay, so now let's have a think about, we have already discussed this um, in a bit of depth Before. already, um, as far as diverse learners go. So how would we accommodate for our diverse learners um, for this activity? And it, as we've um, discussed previously too, that that word is in itself, diverse learners, is very broad. Mm -hmm. And we know from our previous knowledge that that covers a lot of areas. Obviously, the big one that we've already covered would be definitely collaborative learning. This isn't a solo experiment that they're going to be doing on their own. And when assigning roles, we already said that we would be doing mixed ability groups. Yes. And if there were kids who struggle or needed additional support, you know, like um, Flynn said, buddying them up with somebody, you know, in the class that is confident and has that relationship to yeah. offer that additional support. Mm -hmm. a, a very mature, kind student would be the ideal partner but unfortunately you could have a classroom where you have a lot of students that have learning difficulties and mm -hmm. there might be so you could possibly bring in a teacher aid or even you could specially supervise well not especially supervise but keep a closer eye on a certain group or a teacher aid probably the ideal but again that's resources that could be another classroom and so on Mm. Yeah, I think an important thing about a teacher aid though is you have to make sure they're supporting the students, yeah. not uh, yeah. taking over. So it's yeah. still the she student's job to pour all the soil and do all that, but they're here to support to make sure the students feel comfortable and that um, yeah. they're actually learning instead of just being like, like distracted. Yeah. Um, 
That's a great point. Mary. What about, we talked about on the right-hand side that, yes, we decided there needed to be a list of equipment and a list of procedures. Most of the time that's written out in text. Mm. How could we maybe assist visual learners or um, well, impaired? A lot of classrooms have the, you know, a lot of classrooms these days, they've got the interactive whiteboard or they've got the Apple TV, or even if you're just going to write it up on a traditional whiteboard or chalkboard for them to constantly have that visual list and visual, if you want to put some specific, you know, uh, instructions, timing up on the board. Mm -hmm. What about pictures yeah. instead of text? Yeah, I was just going to say imagery and even like you could watch a video um, of someone doing the same experiment or it better yet, record yourself doing the experiment and then just take snapshots and put them up to say, OK, so this is what you're looking for. This means you're on the right track, yada, yada, and just sort of get all that just so it's not as clean cut. It's so students feel more free, more comfortable seeing that. You go, OK, I feel comfortable doing this. Time to give it a crack. So like a snapshot picture of pouring the soil, snapshot pouring the sand, so they know, OK, first yeah. we the soil, then we pour the sand, then yeah. we do the water. Yeah. Right. A good thing you could do is, well, first you run it through yourself, like I, like I mentioned earlier. So you at the front of the class run through it, or like a good idea. You, you obviously won't show the results because that, you know, kills the fun. You get to that point. But what you could do is on the whiteboard, I believe, as Matt has mentioned, you could get like pictures up, but you could also accommodate text next to it for those that are, who might not kind of get the gist of the pictures, right? So this is accommodating for all sort of learning styles because our, vi our visual, our kinetic, so on. So having text, you could have like text here, your picture corresponding there, right? So they mm -hmm. read it, they might have a question mark, they look at the picture, right? And in fourth, um, in those, those, they just like read text and do fine, right? You could have picture, text, uh, picture, text, picture, text, so on, after you've gone through it visually. I think that should accommodate for everyone. Mm -hmm. And maybe, oh, yeah, no, I think that's spot on, Flynn. And I think something, depending on how much time you have, it could even be a fun activity to sort of get the students to look through it, read through it, um, and then go, okay, jumble it all up, now put it together to sort of cement their knowledge before they actually go into it. Because, like, you can see a picture and go, okay, yep, poor soil, poor water, beauty. But it'll be good to see them apply that knowledge before the experiment starts and say, okay, yes, you've got the understanding of the steps, go, here's your soil, bang. You've got that, bang, bang, and sort of get that out. But yet again, that's time and if you've got yeah, all that. It would also be good to ask. It's something that could be used if it was if it yeah. was a class that needed yeah. that. Mm -hmm. needed. What you could also do is um, you, could, you could pick on certain students that you know that are prone to take a little nap and you could say, could you read out the first step? You get them to sort of read it out. So it's got them sort of thinking about what they're doing and they're not actually, so it's got them talking, right? So it's got them moving. It's allowing them to sort of, so that you know that they've read it out and they have an understanding of what they're doing because you don't want those that are kind of lethargic and so on just sitting there blocked on the desk because you want everyone to be engaged, interactive and willing to participate in this experiment. So for, for our students who are the, the high level, mm -hmm. how could we adapt this activity? Because at the moment we're, you know, we're timing five minutes and we're measuring at the end. Is there something, you know, we could do for these higher level students? Mm -hmm. You, what, I, you definitely, I, I don't think that I would adapt the activity. I think that in terms of equity, I would have all students participating in the same activity, but I would prepare extension tasks for those gifted mm -hmm. students. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. And even that could be like what we discussed prior to, okay, we know what it's going to do in five minutes. What's it going to do in half an hour? What do you predict it's going to do in a day? Yeah. And then they could sort of try to formulate using all their scientific words um, and all like prior knowledge, they can go, okay, well, this one had more water retained. Does that mean in the next day it's going to be drier or if it's going to be wetter? Mm. And then okay. they can use yeah. those questions to sort of get further thinking. Yeah, what, exactly. And that's what, what I was thinking, that they could, yeah, they could um, measure at different time frames mm. just further on than what, yeah, just extending so, on activity. Yeah, um, 
graph or whatever they may use for the results. So they have reported it one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, and using the trend. So from one to five, what they could get at 10, 15, 20, and using the graph to not only find time, but also to show the results. So showing their reasoning as of why they think. So let's say one minute, it's like one and five minutes, it's at six, right? They find the trend. What are the 10? What are the 15, 20? Yeah. You know, like sort of figure out themselves. And you could maybe challenge and put in a tricky question. What would it be? It's, what would it be in an hour? Mm -hmm. So they've got to do it themselves. They've got to go through a long process to figure out what would be the retention. Yeah, and exactly. would be something great to include. It, it allows them to be challenged, but also allows the, uh, other students to be able to participate fully in the activity and gain that essential information. And this is this is this is great here because it looks like you guys are about to start the activity because I was just about to chime in and be like such excellent points from everybody, but Jamie and Allison do not want to be watching two hour videos from everybody. Exactly. All right, let's keep we moving. We think the same. We think the same. We, okay. we move on. All right, so the first thing we had to do, can anyone remember? Oh, do you mind moving up your cameras a little bit? Okay. I'm okay. I just moved. So which way? Just a little bit. Yep, perfect. Perfect. Okay, perfect. All right. We are putting in, and we're going to do them all, both soils at the same time. Yep. So we've got, can you see that? Okay. Um, yeah, cotton wool's in. Exactly the same size cotton wool. And we're going to do. Carly's doing sand. Yeah. She, 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 I love the beach. So I went to the beach and was happily to, go, to get to um, get some sand for us. Two tablespoons. And it is nice and dry. She's drying it, it, it out. Yeah, it was before the rain hit that I got that. <laughs> <laughs> very, very Something close. I just thought about, do you think the teacher needs to pre-measure the soil? Because I could do that or I could do that. Yeah, I feel like you just have um, stricter measure, oh, like tools. Like you'd have the actual ones that you scoop in, swipe off the top like the little like, tough ones yeah we've just got some sand and soil in a container and we're just scooping it yeah. out so the so students maybe... would obviously do that and then i think we'd have to make sure that the soil was fairly flat yeah, yeah. make sure it's that level to be maybe in the demonstration showing maybe use a spoon to sort of just like wipe across to keep it flat. yeah yeah. Yeah. I'd, be just, I'd be instructing them to just to like brush it across the surface, but yeah. not yeah, to you don't want to yeah. condense it because no. then that would change your stuff. Of the bottom. Uh, and okay, hang on, I'll get a timer on mm -hmm. once we've already. So um, earlier we prepared, we did use, I've got a 60 mil syringe. So we've got 60 mils of water in a glass just for our purposes. Perfect. So the students, we could use. You know, they could, you know, measure out the 60 mils themselves. One, two, three. Pouring in the water. But when we're doing... oh, nice. I like the one, two, three. I feel like that's important. And we would, you know, obviously, and now we're timing. So we've got the five-minute timer going. So, and now we've Kylie made sure... has already got some coming in. And we've made sure that the funnel doesn't touch. Can you see that okay? Yeah. 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 I'm just on phone, so I've got to look closer, but that's me. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I think my internet's a bit shaky, but it looks yeah. good. I see it fine. Definitely see it coming. So yeah. as you guys were doing this activity with the students, um, what kind of questions would you be asking them during this period where you're waiting? You would, yeah, what can you see? What, what, yeah, exactly this what's all about happening. the observations, isn't it? What yeah. can you see? What are you thinking? Okay. Who do you think will have the most uh, most water? And um, why? I feel like it's important. Is, okay, why do you think that might be the case? What? Are, how does the soil and how does the sand feel? Does what, what? How do they feel to grab? So on. Maybe questions like that. Which I'm just. Yeah. If you can you see that? I don't yeah. know because we've had all the rain, but the water's just sitting on the top, <laughs> and it's not. Mm through whereas we've done it before with the soil and it did come through so she's just going to give it a little mix maybe that was just um a bit of condensing by accident when you're trying to flatten it out 
you and also run into that situation here. where like part of what's going to make up the soil is the clay so if you end up with like a, a a layer of clay it's basically going to act as like a actual barricade for the water okay. so i'll just well, set up as i wouldn't i would not say that's uncommon for the soil um to pretty much prevent a lot of the water because yeah as travis just said you could get more clay just so, so you'd have oh, go on, sorry yeah. um as we we're saying before what would the students be looking for and what would they be saying i could just imagine them saying look the water's running fast now it's coming out you know they'd be getting so excited right now mm -hmm. yeah um because the this one is now currently working mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i feel like it would be important like a few things to go yeah. over like mm -hmm. what happened to the color yeah it got darker why yeah because it got wet and you'd have to sort of lead discussions like that Mm. and sort of and maybe be like hey where do you see that where one, do you see sand that color before oh in the water uh, section of the water beach. that is one thing we should point out they should not drink the water under the, in the <laughs> that is something i know one student will want to do that should be forbidden chalky milk is water but it is not drinkable I think that should be mentioned twice, though, because there will be one that will want to do it, and one, someone will be dared to do it, and they will do it. So it's now slowed to a drip. Mm -hmm. We've got how long have we got left? We've still got two minutes. Yeah, you could also discuss the like look at the difference in clarity between the water that's been funneled. Mm. Like, there are lots of observations that you could make. Has yeah. the watercolour changed? Has the texture changed? That could be good things to point out. Can you guys see that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Coming uh, uh, um, uh, uh, move, uh, moving it close. Yeah. Yeah. You want to move it up, like lift it up instead of uh, coming closer. Uh, yeah. Is <laughs> nah, it, it looks fine. It looks really good. I think the soil's in the, in the lead. Yes. Soil? Yeah. <laughs> But I feel like that's with the with the like shoveling around. Yeah, obviously uh, that would have just. Uh, that's fine though. No, like the experiments worked. You've, yeah. you've filtered it. You've seen every like it's a good. You guys have done very well. And thank you for preparing everything and uh, like getting the sand, getting the soil, and showing us the experiment in real time. Mm, okay, that I think we're done. I've got to do five minutes. <laughs> okay. Good. Um, and we're done. Yeah, I feel like that could maybe be something to consider. Mm -hmm. Instead of having the students hold them, you'd actually have to place them because they definitely would start like shaking it. You know, I think they'd hit three minutes and go, "Okay, let's get a wriggle on." Exactly. Yeah. Shake it a little bit. I, I can know feel myself wanting to go. Come on, more. Yeah. Come on. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what's that going to do to the activity or to the experiment? It's. Yeah. And then you could also say that if two different people were holding them at different angles, one of them shaking yeah. a little more, you're actually introducing a new variable. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So what That'd we be needed here was a shorter um, spout, spout yeah. or a taller glass so that it wasn't yeah. sitting down in the water. Yeah. Yeah. So, ideally, so that you can see the drip. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, then that would be perfect if you had just like, do you know how you can get the long test tubes, the long plastic ones with a flat base? Yeah. You could easily whack one of those on, and that would be mwah, perfect. Oh, excuse me. We need to measure it now. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. She's taking off with that water. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So Kylie's going to measure sand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the sand. So let's have a look. Oh, okay. Because I didn't, we didn't use a container that has measurements on it. Sorry, yeah, okay. After all, Ali did say this was supposed to be a little. Can you see that, guys? Yeah. Okay, we've got forty mils. Mm -hmm. Wow. And what is that at? Forty. Can you see that? Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's about, is it forty-five or forty-six? It's hard to see, but yeah. So we've got. I will tell you. It's forty. Yeah, yeah. Forty. No, oh, what? Oh, what? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wager. Even if they both completely drain, that the sand's still gonna have more water than the soil. All right. We're gonna okay. do the soil now. Mm -hmm. 
And I feel like it'd be helpful for the kids to just have one, like, measuring tube. Because I can imagine if someone tries to lift it, they get the shakes. Yeah. And that's yeah. gone over. Well, what if they do the experiment and spill it, so whether maybe we actually need containers that have the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I'm... Yeah. yeah. The what? test tubes I'll send for the long ones. Right. Like water bottles with like the flip with like the flip top like for the lid you could get like a proper yes. lid <laughs> go Travis <laughs> what well, yeah I recommend a lid uh, in the students for the measure shoot. it at Penny 38 so that's yeah 30, 38 mil yeah. was from our soil well so I agree with that. With the students, I would definitely use a container or a cylinder that has measurements on it. So then yeah. they can clearly measure without having to pour, which is going to cause yeah. all sorts of... And tall enough so that the funnel, when the water coming up, the spout's not sitting in the water because yeah. then you can't see it dripping. It yeah. dripping. Just another observation they can make how fast or slow it's coming. Yeah. Then the conversation, you know, bec would become so. Well, if they both stop draining, what happens to the rest of the water and the soil? Yeah. Alrighty. So that that was That's the awesome. experiment. So. Awesome. So, yes, so, great. so Flynn, over to you. How do you think we can record the data in it? What sort of table would we use? Personally. Because this is year six and they're still not high school students, I would probably go with something simple such as a bar graph because it allows us to easily display like the units such as um, mill well, we would use millilit or milliliters of water, yes. Yep. Milliliters of water, we could use that. Wait, yeah, milliliters, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> milliliters of water. Mm -hmm. the, what else could we do? Probably milliliters of water and the time would be the most yeah yeah everyone agree with that time time yeah. and yeah. Uh, yeah. water would be our x and y axes and then um obviously the two bar graphs would be uh the soil and the uh, the soil and the sand and then i'm trying to think i'm just sorry i'm going up a bit of top of my head here just it's to visualize it if i can't okay um, so soil and sand would be our two variables within the bar graph, and our title mm -hmm. would be um, water. Re well, we, well, we want to make this for you. We want to make this very friendly for Year Six students. So maybe we wouldn't use retention. No, um, maybe um, held. Does this make sense? Held um, water held over time over five minutes. Water held over time. Does that make sense to any of you? If that was the main title of the graph. Well, yeah. We could probably think of a different word. I know it's tricky on the spot, trying to jumble everything. Um, I'm, but I, I, like, I like the graph idea. So would you have, so when you said, um, so at the bottom it would be sand and soil, and then when you have time, does that mean, did you say time was up yeah. the side, or was that milliliters? So it's got sand, soil, milliliters, and then the actual amount comes up. Yeah. So yeah, I would, yeah. I would also do something along the lines of so um in terms of like a cross curriculum priority, something like this, you would be connecting back to your technologies with your food and fiber production, mm. connecting that with sustainability. So what that runs into, like your connection there with your sustainability and your food and fiber production is mm. looking at runoff. So healthy soils on farms prevent runoff. Preventing runoff prevents the chemicals from the nutrients in those soils leaching yeah. and running off into the ocean. So that's right. one of the points that you want to make. So I would go with how much water were we putting in? What's 100% of that volume of water? Mm -hmm. And then the percentage of water that drained through those soils is your percentage of runoff. And I would be comparing those two with each other. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Can, can just stop for a minute? What? Travis would be we need to go back. The research question is which soil best retains water and why? So yeah. it's not about the runoff. No, no, no. That 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 does connect to the runoff. So soils that retain water better prevent runoff. Yeah. So what you could do is is um we what 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 would the units be? It would be um the milliliters retained and so would would it be still be milliliters retained in the? I'm sorry, I'm going a little bit off. What about a bar graph that showed 
you could even do three, like um, you've got your soil and sand, so you've got your um, independent variable, that would and be with the dependent variable is on the side, which is your water. Yeah. yeah. So you would do sand and soil next to each other, yeah. up 60 mils, because they both started at 60. Then another one, sand and soil, how much um, came out, so what was – what was the runoff that we were talking about before? And yeah. then another one, sand and soil, that then shows what was retained. Beautiful. That's what, oh, yeah. Patty, great <laughs> minds think alike. Great <laughs> minds think alike, baby. He was sand and soil, millilitres up the side. Oh, my gosh. That's perfect. But Wait, how, that prepare, how are the kids recording that... this first? Where, where are they putting this in? They need a table to put it before they can do their graph um well probably doesn't even need oh sorry is this for flint sorry yes, what was your yeah. um question again i apologize i didn't i wasn't oh. so it's just saying that prior to the kids mm. doing their graph they need to complete some sort of table to put mm. so they would draw the table up yeah, yeah. the experiment and then put the data that they gather from the experiment into the table and then table to graph. Flynn, would you would you recommend the students doing something along the lines of so you could have your sand and then yep. you could have your soil and before you start the experiment you ask them to write down in a table yeah. a description of the soil, a description of the sand and then they could even go into discussing the behavior of the soil in comparison mm. to the behavior of the sand, mm. what type it is mm -hmm. and then Sorry, what does that mean? Uh, you thought well beyond me. I was thinking maybe a little, I was thinking maybe like a brief description, but perfect, Travis. What they could do is, um, so there'll be, what, what could be provided is maybe within their book or within like a sheet of paper provided, preferably, preferably their book because we want to be eco-friendly. We don't want to be wasting paper. Um, what they would do is, so that one of the roles prescribed to the students within the graphs would be results recorder, similar to how um, I am in a sense. So they would write down what they, if we were doing it over time, for example, they would write down at the minute how much was, how much they could visually see. So let's say they saw, well, obviously they wouldn't have it exact, but it would be estimations, right? So they could do, they could estimate how much they saw, whether it be, is, is um would the glass be when the water's getting uh filtered through? Is that would that be within a measured glass? Yes, or well, not? We would yeah. we would prefer it. Yeah, yeah. So because remember the data that's collected in the table and the graph has to be observed. Yeah. So the timekeeper would inform <laughs> the. Oh, sorry. Was I interrupting you? Oh, sorry. Um, what the timekeeper would probably do if there was a timekeeper. Uh, Role. What they would do is they tell the results recorder at one minute when to write down. So to write down for soil, it was let's say two millimeters, and sand is at one, right? Then at second minute they would do the same. Third, fourth, and fifth they'll do the same, and then they could either if we're doing it like that, that's how I would write the graph. So they would have the results for each minute and how much water was within the bottom, because they would also have um, the but also know beforehand how much water was put in, correct? They would know that. So they would know how much water was poured in. So then from figuring out uh, the fifth minute, they could be able to compare, whether it be through subtraction, how much water was retained. And then, yeah. Uh, sorry, I might have rambled off a bit, and I do apologise. I'm just trying to process this. Uh, no, that's cool. So we need to draw a table to be able to show. Yeah. yeah. And then, the, yeah, and then um, so when they've written... Because what I'd say at first is to actually just write down the numbers because you can't have a table without knowing the numbers in the back and then using those numbers, they'd be able to create a graph. Now. Obviously, the numbers have come from what they've just observed yeah. from the activity. Yeah. That's yeah. What, what, sorry if I've what does the table look like? Table, uh, I would say uh, bar graph. So they would have... No. The table. So do you, are you talking something like this, Flynn? Yeah. yeah. So you've got... This is really... So maybe something you could do is give them a whole worksheet and it's got like team members that you can have a, uh, like a sentence for their initial hypothesis and a bit where they can write down their observations and then that can link to their final hypothesis and then you could just craft a super simple table 
Perfect. Just to go sand, soil, milliliters, yeah. and then and then they can go to Flynn's table. Because yeah. I think that was a great thing. When, I, writing, when I said the example for the minutes, it'd be minute one. So sand would be here. Oh, sorry. So sand here, soil here, like Matt had it, time, 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 time. Or it would be, or instead of doing time, they'd be doing uh, the milliliters retained. So it'd be the milliliter, one, one. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I didn't explain that properly. Matt no. literally, Matt explained what I was saying, the gibberish. Yeah, yeah no, no, I, pe I picked up what you were saying. It was just yeah. tricky sorry. getting it out. No, don't be sorry. You're doing it fine. We've got um, that. We, we know we've got the table and we're going to do the bar graph. So that's that's fine. We've got all that information. So now yeah. we'll, we'll I hand up to Matthew. I verbally explain that well. I probably should have gotten paper. That, that's my No. Point. Okay. Matt, Matt did the Matt did the um, English version of what I was saying. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So for Matthew, um, if you want to lead us into a discussion, so we can generate the final hypothesis. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. Oh, that stops sharing my screen, doesn't it? No, 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 Matthew. That's perfect. It's on the screen. Yep. Oh no. That, does that hide my face? Yeah. Oh, no, no, Am you're I... still, well, at least for me, you're all still down the bottom of the screen yeah. and yeah. the PowerPoint is just the main visual on the screen. So okay. it's going to look different for you because you're hosting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was just making sure that I wasn't going to Yeah. No, change that's anything great. up. Okay. So I'll just keep it like this because I was hoping we could edit it. So, um, yeah. So uh, it, this is, are we talking about the, generating the final hypothesis? Yes, so yeah. I was going to have a bit just briefly on um, like uh, my inferences and observations, but we sort of discussed that as we were doing our experiment anyway. So yeah. I'll just quickly jump into, and because I'm conscious of the time as well, I feel bad for um, everyone else to mark this, but um, a few quick points to discuss before you actually get into your mm -hmm. teaching is the final hypothesis. Yeah. So, oh, sorry, before the experiment, you have to teach them. Okay. In our hypothesis, we need to clearly define like our area of the focus. And that's you two have summed it up beautifully already with the if then why. So I can quickly jump over this. Um, I also wrote up the variables that we came up with. So um, maybe depending on the students, you could even set up something to say, like you had the discussion we had prior, bam, puts on the board, these are your variables. We know, okay, independent variable, the soils that's being used. Beautiful, done. All the students know it. Dependent variable, um, how much water ends up in the measuring cup? Perfect. Yes, um, it's perfect. So then I was thinking um, with that in mind, so we have to still try to predict the relationship between both variables and we've got our variables there. Uh, if we can work together to try and construct a final hypothesis. Like I've got one here, but um, after everything we've discussed, um, I think I'd rather hear from you guys and see what you think, because I'll happily write one up now. What are we feeling? Sure. Okay. So we're still changing the soil, aren't we? Yes. So that's the, so the whole, the, um, we're changing the soil that's being used to discover how much water yeah. is going to be um, retained. Yeah. So that's the sort of bounce around. Okay. What are we, what are we thinking? I can jump in to start her off. I, I, so. I, I, I would, I would, my, my initial thoughts are something along the lines of the smaller the particles in the soil. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, what did we find? Hang on, what was, yeah. yeah. Uh, so the results were sand had 46 mil and soil had 38. So the sand did retain less soil, oh, less water than the soil. Okay. Um, so and, that's perfect. An so, inference so, from so, me so, based on. An inference yeah. for me based on our observations there were that especially in the soil where it only 38 mils were left over out of the 60 you put in. So what happened to the rest of that water? It was bound to those particles in the soil. So it was holding on to those particles. So one could say the smaller the particles in the soil, the easier it is for the water to hold on to said particles. It didn't disappear. Mm. So it's in there, but how does it hang on there? So if it's smaller pieces. Hmm. Um, I think it's also to do with there's less of a gap, less of a gap for it to get through. Like it's got to squeeze through all these tiny, tiny gaps between the soil. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. yeah. And it's also I, I 
you probably touch on it in grade six, but it's also, you know, hydrogen bonding. Um, yeah, the smaller the particles, the easier it is for it to literally um, bond and hold on to those particles. Awesome. Um, I can chuck mine up as well, but I, I really like your Travis, and you'll notice we had a very similar start. <laughs> so, oh, very cool. Great. You've done um, so, that a lot this week. <laughs> yeah, everyone's been on. We, we got lucky with H to know. Everyone's on the same page. <laughs> so um, I just tried to uh, very good jump into this thing. So um, uh, it's like so the smaller the soil properties, the closer yeah. they are together, which links to what Travis was saying. Um, and I force. I'm also focused on like trying to keep it simple. The less space for the water to pass through, therefore yeah. denser the soil, more water is retained. Okay. But I really like how you focus more on being held because that's okay. also a good way that the students definitely will see it. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I like yeah. that being held too. So mm. what, what, do we, what are we thinking? I'm sort of leaning to being held, the, uh, how much is water is actually mm. being held, but it's up to you guys. It's a, um, you could say that because this is just uh, the, uh, okay, well, well before, before I learned what I was going to say, because it hasn't been covered yet, what stage of the five E's are we in? Mm. So we've done, as well, lots of it would have been done prior. Yeah. So I'd say the value. Uh, we've, oh, I don't know, okay. so we've engaged them. Explore, explore. Uh, explore. I, and I would say definitely we're in the explore phase, which finishes with our final hypothesis, <laughs> and then say that we could Explain move off. To the CDSU, yeah. I just written it down. <laughs> Penny's like, you knew it. <laughs> but, but we could we could leave out the being held and just stick with your final hypothesis. And then I think in the explain phase, where you get the students to explain uh, their understandings and their inferences, then you would lead into that deeper understanding yeah, of the CDSU. I like that. Then that would also help with student differentiation because yes. you could see um, word choice, especially by students. Yeah. Um, but yeah, awesome. Um, well done. We all good for the final hypothesis? Yes, yes. thank you. Yeah. That's Perfect. I just think that's a phenomenon. Um, it achieves everything. It literally covers yeah. everything. No, nah, I think it was you guys did well, especially with the experiment and all that help and input of you guys putting through it, because we actually use observations and inferences from our experiment, from the data, and we saw in our data that the land, that uh, the sand held less than the soil. Mm. So oh, held, yeah, less than the soil. So we've also used the data to like fine tune um, the final hypothesis. Um, but just a brief thing on the CDS here. Checking the timing here. Yeah, oh, okay. I'll try to breeze through this a bit. No. Um, so I actually, there was this amazing website that I found and it had lots on um, mm. like up close photos of the different types of um, sand and soils. So as Travis was saying before, clay, like in ours, I assume there was a bit of a clump of clay at the top. That's why the water was stuck on the top. It is so small that there is nothing getting through, which is really interesting. Um, but yeah, so the actual retaining of the soil is based on the distance between each grain. Mm. So if there's less room for the water to pass through, mm. then it's gonna be more water. Mm. Oh, if there's less room, sorry, there's gonna be less water. And so say in this, the sandy soil, because there is, they're so big, there are massive gaps in and around them. So the water should, just zip right through yeah um and then so that goes back to the particle size um oh actually no sorry it's on my next i'm getting ahead of myself um so yeah this is when so if you got the sand from the beach which you said which is beautiful mm -hmm. that soil is um really coarse and it's filled of so many things rocks minerals grains and it's also depending on where you are especially living in the beautiful australia if you go further north you can actually get coral and um, little like heaps of that in as well, which is really, really interesting. Um, yeah, and then you'd see from your garden bed, that is made up from your, uh, your like clay and all your other like silt and peat, is it? Yeah, so, so silt, yeah. clay, peat, and um, if, if, you, if, you get a, if, you, if you get the perfect combination of, of those elements, yeah, you end up with loam. Ah, oh, beauty. Um, and are you guys, I'll see if I, can you see that? Yes. yes. Beautiful. So I won't play the whole video, but it is 
awesome. So this guy, actually I can speed it up a little. He gets some sand and I'm um, straight from the beach. As you can see, it's really coarse. Um, and there's his plug. Um, and he puts it under a microscope and just, it is awesome to see how coarse it really is. So this is sand straight from a beach and this would be beautiful to show the kids probably, um, in the explain phase. Oh, actually, no, no, probably in your evaluate because this would help them visualize why the sand yeah. had more space in between. It but, also... Um, It'd also help give them context for why that layer of clay that you would have had in the soil completely stopped the water from draining through yeah. because you would literally need a microscope to see that because clay is yeah. microscopic to sub-microscopic, whereas those sand grains, they're nice to see up close, but you can still see those with the naked eye. And that's the thing. I was trying. And mostly just like sedimentation and whatnot. It's mostly just um, sediments of like rock. Yeah, it's sediments of like rocks and sort of. Yeah, rubble. it's awesome and that's the thing travis you're actually we're on the same wavelength right now because <laughs> if i was trying to find a magnified just like to that caliber of soil just to have them side by side but just because it is so like not microscopic that um everyone only has the super zoomed in on the dirt if that makes sense so i couldn't get a side by side comparison mm. but um yeah, but then this this image as well from the same creators of this one, I've um, linked them and the reference below. Um, it's just awesome to see how much space you can actually fit. And this image also shows that runoff that Travis was talking about. Yeah. Um, but that is probably um, probably for a, a different time. But um, yeah, so the surface runoff isn't based on the soil texture. Um, so that's just saying that um, if you look at this one, see, even though they're not, they're all bumpy and they're all different shapes, mm -hmm. that's not what's causing the runoff. It's that this one has no gaps in between it. So the water is hitting it, shoo, bouncing off the side. Um, I'll try to speed through this quickly. Um, this was from that same website. So they actually have um, higher drainage rates. So the actual soils with the silt and clay in it have higher drainage rates. Um, than clay because clay is pretty much the be all and end all of retaining water yeah. um and yes yeah, this word aggregate um it is probably more than a wow word it is awesome and it comes into everything when you delve deeper into it but it's pretty much just mm -hmm. any crushed stone or um just all those like materials that have just been grained and um put together like that video before it technically would be like that is an example of it because it's a combination of different rocks, different, um, yeah, all that stuff. I think that's okay. really very good to include because, like, if the students saw, like, how, I guess, refined and how, like, amazing that the mm. uh, topic uh, sand looks, I think they'd be very, very engaged to be like, wow, I'm actually, this is what I, this is what I feel, this is what I, what I touch. There's so there much. There's very, another... There's another two videos that do the same, but I won't show them because as much as I want to, <laughs> so, yes. yeah, but, um, they are we awesome as well. Not bore Ali that much. Yeah. Okay. So it would be good to also discuss with the students specifically sand and soil and what makes them different, what makes them unique, which is good. So um, the main part of sand is that the particles are much larger, as we did see. Um, and then that makes um, more space between each sand particle, which actually makes uh, more water pass through them and there is less water actually retained. So yet again, that video before would be awesome for the students to visualize it. Because if you think, oh, sand is small, big shock, dirt is small. Hmm. But if you think that it actually massive differences between the size of grains of sand and grain and like dirt particles. Mm. So that's, um really interesting okay. uh, and soil um yeah there are you could discuss with prior knowledge maybe say okay whose parent has a garden who mm -hmm. who helps with gardening so, or even lots of schools do green programs where they'll have the school garden maybe you can take a trip over there and say okay 
we're using soil that has all these supporting growths, uh, all these things that support growth, sorry, in the plants because they actually have like clay or silt or any of that stuff to sort of make it better for growing. Um, don't need to delve heavier soils. That's just something um, that's just based off the ratio, um, but we'll just skim over that quickly. Um, but the main thing, the finer the particles of the soil, the more water the soil will retain. And I feel like that's an amazing take home for the students mm. because that's, that's the experiment. That's the goal. Yeah. They want to that try and find. I said in the future, uh, trying out multiple different types of um, soils instead of using, mm. uh, so you could test out like, um, I don't know, maybe, uh, broadly a high quality soil to a low, lower quality mm. soil and then see the, the difference. That could be something you could expand upon in the future, I think. Yeah, That's or nice. even just as simple as um, backyard soil versus growing soil mm. but like you're putting, a, yeah and yeah. just just connect to what flynn said versing a, a lower quality soil with a higher quality soil what makes a quality mm. soil and That's, also for what is a quality soil because if you are growing succulents you do not want a soil that retains a lot of water so yeah. it depends on what food and fiber you're producing oh okay yeah. perfect what's like the what would be the best soil to grow um i yeah. don't know like yeah. an apple or something well like i think i think that's more the connection you'd be making is which soils are best suited for what you're growing so which environmental conditions are best suited to yeah. which forms of life and that would be beautiful for in the evaluate phase because yeah. it's once you have reflected on all this knowledge that they found and they actually try to link that mm -hmm. Who like their own lives and what they've seen and, that, and, and that, sustainability. Like, that is yeah, uh, exactly. a really good uh, point to bring up, Travis. Um, awesome. That was well done. Awesome, well done. There are a few of that. I'll keep that up. I'll stop sharing. Is the camera on? No. All right, a couple more things and we're almost done. So once the kids have done the experiment, mm -hmm. um, yeah, back on that by the way. There you go. Oh, is that? Yep. Yeah, that was really good, Matthew. Well done. Oh, thank you. So what can we do to, what sort of um, formative or summative assessment can we do to oh, assess the kids? How can we assess them? How can we assess oh. the students' knowledge after doing all of that? One question about that. If you do give the students a worksheet where they do, like the one that I just yeah. really, it, it's scuffed, but it's just the <laughs> mentality of observations, yada, yada. Would that count as your assessment piece? Would you give one document to a team and say, um, okay, this is your groups. What's your team name? H2 No are uh, awesome. And then they have to put in their observations and you can see sort of their mentality and sort of where they go or would you keep that as more so for well, them I, as well I, I think you'd have a variety because you would have your formative assessment in terms of you would have student participation how students performed in their individual roles student responses to questioning student engagement stu and then you'd have the summative assessment students data tables and the um, actual tables that they produce that's separately that's their initial hypothesis, their final hypothesis. You might have a checklist that you're marking off for the students and you also might give them exit slips. So I don't think that we would be cool. using one assessment, but a combination of summative yeah. and formative assessment. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I feel like, oh, sorry, here you go. Um, it's having something that comes back to the research question. If you went, you need to say to the kids, which soil best retains water and why? How are we going to get them to show us that they know that? Well, as Travis said, it would be covering, uh, you could cover uh, a fair amount. So how they could uh, show that they understand it would be through that, um, through their, um, through their results, through the tables and through the graphs that they can clearly identify what has the best retention, a retention out of the two so that they have, they've written up the numbers and that they've displayed it within a graph. That could be a good way to see that they understand. It might not show them why but it shows them that they know which one has the best retention and as of why that could be something further evaluated in later lessons or through a debriefing like something probably more simplified to what Matt is showing us today so that mm. clearly shows us the reasoning and the logic behind it 
And yeah. obviously, this is the explore phase. So I think as you begin your explain phase of these lessons, you would obviously be entering that explain phase with a activate prior knowledge whole class discussion, and you would be trying to identify any alternate conceptions students might have had that you didn't pick up on throughout the explore uh, phase. Uh, we are just, this team is just all on the same. I was going to say, what Flynn said, and then I was like, oh, I'll elaborate. And then Travis said it. Um, <laughs> But I think that's so true. Like, if you think a science experiment, especially in primary, there is so much build-up and so much aftermath of the experiment. So this isn't going to be a, oh, yeah, yeah, today will be a good day. Let's let's do a science experiment, and they'll do it, bang, done. This will have weeks of build-up. They'll do the experiment, and then there'll be heaps of time for them to analyse what they've done, why they've done it. How does this relate back to their lives? How can they use that knowledge in the like future? And then that links, because I've just been checking out all the um, content descriptors for the higher year levels, and it keeps on building on um, like organisms and interactions between organisms. And then that just links and links and links and just keeps building upon itself. So I feel like there is, like Travis said, there's no one piece of assessment that you can mark. Ali's key word of the week is the interconnectedness of it all. But then, like, oh. so that's points for the three of us. Kylie and Patty, do you quickly have anything of assessment to just add yourself? And then we'll quickly move on to the next one, because I do really want us to wrap up now. Yeah. Yeah. I've got some quick ones. Yeah. So one way of doing it is then completing their left-hand side, yeah. which is them making yeah. sense of the... So just having a look at that... Perfect. Perfect. That idea. Or even from the pictures that Travis showed us before that showed us a container with sand, a container with soil, a container with clay, and them drawing the particles and then showing the water. So if they could draw that for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I should think if they could draw it and also label that diagram as well, I think that's an excellent this idea. Is and they draw big pieces with lots of water in there. Yeah. And this is the soil with little pieces and the water only gets a little bit. Mm. They draw the clay solid and the water sort of sits on the top. If they could draw that and explain to you mm, it's because of this, then they know what they're doing. I would use that as a summary yeah. assessment. That yeah. is if you, if you had a diagram for the students, and they were they were drawing the sands and they had larger particles. And not only that, but they're all different shapes and sizes. Then, yeah, it's a perfect way to assess and whether or not they're... Water, I loved it. It showed the water in there, how far it can get. It was brilliant. Yeah, it was. Yeah. All right, and you guys you guys said a couple things. So what was the last thing you guys wanted to discuss? I was like, um, no, no, it was just another um, quick way of getting their knowledge was just like through the fun games, like Kahoot and oh, yeah. using oh, national yeah. resources and things like that. Yeah, so that was just other ideas. It would also be a great way when they're finished, just like a bit of a brain break if you're having some quick games, something a little bit more exciting yeah. to get them re-energised. Yeah, yeah. But that was what we yeah, were thinking of. That Sorry. was just for a second. Okay. <laughs> Take it's over to you, Travis. Okay, so just in regards to our left-hand side, so to finish up for us, so that will be done externally from this recording. It'll be 20 minutes long, and I will be seeking some additional input from you guys before Tuesday, um, before we actually produce that one. But what I just wanted to cap off today with is if everybody could just take a moment and give me what was your big, oh, I didn't think about that that way before, or oh, I didn't make that inference before we all went through this together, or wow, that really blew my mind moment from the activity and our discussions that we've just been through. One thing that really stood out to you. Mm. Well, I'm happy to start. Yeah, oh, sorry, actually, yeah. yeah Matthew's visuals, the, yeah. the pictures. Oh. Yeah, that yeah. was really, I think that, that's important. Yeah. That yeah. sand under the microscope was yeah. what. I would it's yeah. like you sort of you guess that the sand is bigger looking at it, like looking mm. at the container. Maybe, maybe not, because the children would um, look at that dirt and still think that that's mm. bigger. But to see that under the microscope, that was like, wow. Mm. Yeah. So Matthew's visuals, I'm locking that in from Kylie. So she's stolen that one, and I'm just going to move on. Patty, <laughs> Patty you, you don't get Matthew's visuals. You've got to be creative. What's something that stood out to you? Um, oh, I'm a visual learner, see? So <laughs> <laughs> if, if you need time to think, I, I've got one. 
it's sim it's sort of based um sort of based off it too but i loved seeing like just the change in size on such a microscopic level like just that little that other diagram that we showed um you think sand and you think these tiny tiny little things but then compare that to clay and it's just on this another level I, that honestly blew me away yeah. like it, it is just crazy and then just how rough and coarse all the sand is and has these massive gaps in it and all that but it's this big and it's just that blew me away that's why i love doing all the cdsu stuff because yeah. it was awesome you would have you would have just stolen something that, that really blew my mind was is, is realizing just how small the clay was from microscopic oh. to sub microscopic that you actually, if you think about it, if you have clay in front of you, you actually can't pull it apart and see oh, those individual particles. Right. They're too small for the naked eye to, to visualize. So you can imagine, yeah, well, if they're too small for the naked eye to visualize, where are the gaps for the water to get through? Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Everyone's doing all the uh, incredible points. I think personally, uh, I'd say the terminology, I think it was polar or is it the pores between the... Um, the pores. The yeah. pause. I didn't really understand. I somewhat understood the um, understanding of it, but I didn't actually realize yeah how compact some of those pores were. Yeah. Like in in the diagram. See, this is like going into the visuals Matthew showed again. So I'm kind of stealing. Um, but um, good. Just the um, just how compact those pores were. They were just stuck like that. And as Travis pointed out, you can't even see them. But with like sand, you can kind of point out, but yeah, I, I'm just kind of stealing someone else's there at that point. I don't think it's um, but that was mine. That was kind of no, like a, I, I think focusing on the specific terminology is great. It's the same mm -hmm. thing when Matthew brought up the uh, aggregates, and that's what you would like. Uh, that's that, gonna stick with me now. Yeah, that yeah. kind of made me go, wow, this is like that's kind of insane if you think about it. That's insane. Mm -hmm. I say I say I'll, I'll I'll quickly go next. So one of the things that that really stood out for me was actually making that connection between the activity that we were doing and branching into the cross curriculum priority for same sustainability and bringing yeah. technologies in for your food and fiber production and connecting it back to your sediment runoff and appropriate soil types and then even connecting that to well wait yeah like you said what's the perfect soil and I'm like well it it depends on 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 what you're growing like yes. that, so that a, what we're looking at right here wasn't like what's the best soil for 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 water runoff but not uh, more like what conditions for what mm. you're like, they just you know it it took it from such a small activity to now i'm just yeah. the yeah. applications for this one thing that we did are it's, it's like so uh, it's opened up a lot yeah. of possibilities and yeah. that's what i've liked we've gone from something very simple and we've just expanded on expanded on it up until a point where we've considered a variety of things such as um uh, me and travis's uh, short discussion on the quality of soil how do you determine quality of soil because that can be designed for different things like just going like that's like one little thing we covered and that's exponential it, yeah. it, it's it's mind-boggling it's really mind -boggling. i don't think we could represent our um left hand what side learned. what we've learned how how are we going to represent that do you think well, before we go into that, Patty, what, what what blew your mind, or what was what was something that that you you, you learnt today that you didn't know before today? Just from this. Um, it was the particle sizes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it comes back to that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that like that visual like that I suggested about the assessment, the one that Matthew had up. I think that says it all. Says it all for the whole. If you just had that drawing there, that says everything. Do, you, do, do you mind if I put your mind blown down as just your summative assessment idea? Because I thought that was that oh. was such a. Oh yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And just for just for reference, I just put in the chat bar because I was curious. That is what clay looks like under a microscope. So if you have a quick gaze at that and try to imagine trying to squeeze water past that. Yeah. And we actually, in our experiments day, I feel like we actually got an 
a, a visual real life uh, representation of what happens if you do have a barrier of glaze. Yes, yeah, we exactly. certainly did. Yes, that's right. We did. We sure did. And yeah. then um, it, uh, before I, I, I've got some ideas myself, but if anybody else had any creative things rolling around in the head for a 20 minute presentation for our LHS. Mm. I'm a visual, so I would draw. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was would thinking. Draw. Or maybe a um, you could get like I don't know, like a piece of A3 paper and like draw like you could go. I can't really shot right now, but you could do like maybe like a nice poster or something, like going going <laughs> photos of the microscopic um like soils and stuff. So I, like, feel, I, I, I feel like for each of us when we do our LHS, it's gonna come down to um who we are as people so me i'm i'm a i'm, I'm a bit more kinesthetic i'm a p performer i'm not i'm not a theater student but i'm definitely more of a performer my my initial thinking was more i wanted to do a um a recap for everybody of our light bulb moments but i was actually planning on having little shadow puppets for everyone in the group and oh, i was so going cool. to do a i was going to do a solo performance reenacting <laughs> Okay. Oh, everybody's um, everyone's engagement. So I, it, it's going to be a it's going to be a five man. It's going to be a five person play performed <laughs> by one person with little wow. little shadow puppets. So I'm going to. Well, if you need a hand that just ping us and we'll be happy <laughs> to help. But that, but that I'm I'm open to suggestions and critique. That. That's <laughs> no, that'd be cute, and that'll be unique. All right. Oh, yeah. I say well, the other thing we need to include in that is um, pedagogy. So yes. what pedagogy have we used? Or would Collaborative we... learning? Yeah. Well, we are, uh, definitely at the, with the demonstration, definitely have a touch of explicit in there. Yeah. yeah. We definitely have the collaborative learning, but then I think for the most of it, it's some, you know, inquiry-based, you know, discovery-based yeah. learning. Yep. Data Perfect. collection, yeah. Data. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you... We, how will we weave that into the little? <laughs> Perfect. You could probably get, um, like, especially if it, you're, are you doing voiceovers? Or is it? I think I would literally just have five puppets and I'm going to be frantically swapping between personas. <laughs> oh, God, that is so cool. You could probably um, print out just like a little piece of paper and then like put that on a, um, like a paddle pop or something. And maybe that'll be like the inquiry. They can just sort oh, of pop yeah. Yeah. Say, collaborate yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, but it, it, I have full faith in your um, creativity. But yeah. even just even just showing here are your puppets. Okay, they're working together. Beautiful. Or maybe they're listening to the teacher's instructions. Yeah. Copy that. Group yeah. Like you could easily, especially if you. Um, preface what you're doing. They'll be able to go, ah, oh, group learning, beautiful. Ah, oh, student inquiry. Mwah. Well, also important to remember, like our, our left hand side isn't going to be structured. What we include in that is just what stood out to us. Yeah. It's yeah. our creative side of our brain. It's what yeah. we learnt from it. Yeah. Yeah, a yeah, hundred. It's actually you. Well, isn't isn't what Ali said is it can be. Um, well, I think we can, for the recording itself, as um, just in terms of my role, I think for the recording itself, hi Ali, hi Jamie, we're going to say goodbye now, um, and then we can keep mingling between ourselves. So thanks for watching Jamie, thanks for watching Ali, I hope this isn't twice as long as what you were expecting. Thanks, team. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.